Um, okay, so here we are, 19 years. So let me ask you, 19 years in, at this point, what's your favorite procedure? Ooh, my favorite procedure would probably be lip blush. Okay, so that's what you spoke at yes. at the conference. Yep. Okay, so before we dive into your lip brush technique and why you like it so much, um, your lecture was really good Thank you. at the conference. Were you nervous? Very nervous. Was that your I would first? Say I was very nervous. You were very nervous. Mm -hmm. Was that your first lecture? Yes. That I was spoke at a smaller one before. Okay. Okay. Um, I was surprised at how nervous I was. Yeah. Because I do enjoy speaking. Yeah. And I speak almost every day in front of my apprentices. Right. So I was actually very surprised with myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was a very big learning experience for me. That was my huge takeaway. Okay. So it was it was valuable for me. So what did you learn? What was what was the big uh, takeaway? Um. I think maybe to ask more questions, mm -hmm. to self-advocate a little bit more. Like in the like, ask your audience more questions. Um, no, I think ask the conference owner yes, more questions. Yes. On like, if people can't hear me, I need a new microphone. Oh, I understand. Yeah, right. Things yeah. like that. There were some technical difficulties yes. at um, the conference. I was the first speaker of the day, which yep. I was really excited for. But that also is hard. Yeah. Um, they had made a comment. We're going to start you in a few minutes. We're going to wait for a few more people to be here. Yeah. But then the, the MC called my name. Right. So yeah. So I walked right up, but I should have said, oh, I shouldn't have walked up. Yeah. I said, yeah. no, we're going to wait. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I learned. It was a good learning experience. It is for a me. good learning experience. It is. I, 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 I don't know how many times I, I've, I've lectured. It's just, it's just too many to count, like all over the place. It's been, it's been great. And some experiences, or every experience, every time, even though you had a little bit of technical difficulties, you, um, you didn't quite get an introduction per se yeah um so even though that happened the fact that you got to be on stage and connect mm -hmm. with an audience and that was fantastic right that, that part is always fantastic yes. no matter what else goes on before you get in on mm -hmm. there or after you get off the stage or with your microphone or whatnot it's 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 the time that you're you're on that stage and you're connecting and vibing and speaking mm -hmm. to the audience yeah. the, the, those there that that are in the seats so yeah I've, I've had lots of technical <laughs> difficulties over the years and it is a learning experience uh Brittany because you have and you do have to ask more questions mm -hmm. you have to ask a lot of questions yep. and know. it's okay to pause yes right? I felt like I just needed to keep going and so I did yeah and I it would have been fine for me to say we're gonna wait a minute yeah 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 right? I wouldn't have been yeah able to you were still great up there thank you and uh, but I think when when things go wrong, even like a seasoned speaker like me, when things go wrong, it can rattle you. Yeah. It can ra it can throw you off your game yes. and it can rattle you a little bit. You know, I've I've certainly have had that happen. I was in Miami right before COVID hit and I was doing a live eyeliner on stage. And that's nerve wracking too. A live very demo. nerve wracking, yeah. yeah. But there's something so damn exciting mm -hmm. about it. Uh, but it's nerve wracking. I don't sleep for like three days. You're you know, you're just like, Oh my god, yes. I hope the skin's good, I hope this <laughs> right. is good. You know, and they put me on such a small stage, my chair like almost went, rolled right off the stage. Oh. It's like good thing I lifted my ass mm. up like in the nick of time. So it like that rattled me for a minute. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, and then you have to let you just have to breathe. You have to get back in the game like really super quick. Yeah. Because you've got, you know, a bunch of people sitting there staring mm. at you. Yes. Right. <laughs> Waiting yes. for you for the show to go yes. on. But um, no, I, 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 th I thought you did fantastic. I enjoyed your lecture and um, it did it didn't. You didn't show that it it rattled you. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Good. Yeah, I, yeah so. I tried to keep going, you know? Yeah. And you know what I've learned, too? I've learned that the audience, they're so forgiving. Every, every conference I've ever been to over the years, um, when you get on that stage, what I have found is they're rooting for you. Yes. People were so fantastic yes. and so kind. I had so many people, even during the presentation, ask questions. They were involved. Yeah afterwards grab me say they enjoyed it they learned something which really is the takeaway right hopefully yeah. they learned something exactly so, so, exactly yeah, I, it ended up being fabulous and i was really really thankful for the opportunity yeah i, I, I yeah and I, I got to meet you taryn yeah that's yeah. that's that's fantastic so i'm i'm excited for you you know once you get your first one to your belt it's like yes. then you're then the next one's better yeah, the I'm next ready. one's better and yeah you get mm -hmm. more and more and more prepared mm -hmm. you, you you know um but I, I love it. It was a great crowd there, and I, ha I had a ball, too. So so do you, when you speak at conferences, mm -hmm. do you already have stuff prepared, or do you find that you're tweaking it just a little bit before you go, you're going over it again? Yeah, I, 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 t 
tweak it and, and adjust it for uh, that moment in time, like with what's going on in the industry and um, for maybe the type of crowd. Like sometimes you go to conferences and they're definitely more newbies in the mm -hmm. audience. You know, sometimes you go and there's more uh, intermediate to veterans. Okay. So it kind of like depends. And I don't like to give the same presentation twice, even if it's an eyeliner. Like I can give my needle in the pr my needle lecture five times but um it's going to be a little different every time mm -hmm. i'm going to like adjust some slides yeah. i'm going to change some things up mm -hmm. it's going to be a little different every yeah. time so i don't yeah I like i like to keep things fresh yeah and i almost think of it as a show like we're yes we're going on there to entertain i mean to e i mean to educate a hundred percent that's you know I, they spend a lot of money on their their the conference ticket the plane ticket the hotel um, so we're there to educate. That's why they buy those tickets, along with a little girl party. I mean, yeah, that's definitely, a, lot, yeah, right? a lot of them go just to get away, away from the yeah. hun husbands and kids for a while. <laughs> right. Let's, let's yes. be honest. Yep. Yeah. But they're there for the, um, the education. And for, but as a speaker responsibility, yes, we got to bring the education. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's got to be highly visual. The visuals yeah. have to be good. We have to be entertaining. We can't Absolutely. be drab. Absolutely. The way we speak. My husband works for an asphalt company, and so I went to his conference for his company in January, and I was taking yeah. all kinds of notes, right? Right. And my biggest takeaway was, don't be that boring person. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't be that boring. <laughs> right. You're like, your voice should kind of fluctuate yes. and up and down. Um, have have a little fun with the, with the audience. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I, I guess the big thing is enjoy yourself up there enjoy yourself up there i throw a few f-bombs <laughs> i can't help it yeah. no you yours know, is fantastic it's just yeah. me i yeah even on here I'll, you know i say fuck every now and then and it's like i'm so sorry pardon my french you know but but it makes you human you're real yeah you on yeah. stage you know three or four yeah. if i'm speaking for an hour you know expect two or three f-bombs to come out <laughs> here and there it's just they're unpredictable they, they just come and i i can't help it but it's just the way it is but yeah i, I love it so you're gonna speak again Definitely. Yeah. I hope to. Yeah. 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 I think you ought to. So it's great. Um, how long did you prep? How long did you prepare for this, what, 45 minute lecture? Mm -hmm. Yep. How many months, yep. Brittany? Because uh, it's usually. It months. was probably seven months. <laughs> I think since the day that Kelly asked me is when I, at least I was always on my brain, right? Mm -hmm. um, I probably didn't get really serious till about four months before sitting at my computer. Yeah. But for those first three months prior, it was always on my brain. I was putting things together chronologically in my head. Yeah. What were the important things to speak on? Right. What things could be left out? Yeah, things and like you gotta that. get your timing down. Yes. Because, yeah. you know, with some, Kelly was a little generous in letting, uh, if you went over mm -hmm. a little bit, it was okay. Yeah. But there are some conferences you go to, oh, hell no. It's like, you, you are done at oh, one, they you say are you're done. off the stage at one. Wow. Oh yeah, I mean, super strict mm -hmm. about your timing. So you almost have to practice your lecture a little bit. Do you like that or prefer that? I, d I don't prefer that. It's okay. it's um, a little stressful, but mm -hmm. I respect it. Yeah. I understand it. You know, I did my own conferences, America the Beautiful. Um, so I understand the importance of staying on time throughout mm -hmm. the day. So I absolutely respect those strict boundaries. Mm -hmm. They just put more pressure and yeah. stress stress on the speaker because you got to make sure you you get through your whole mm -hmm. lecture in 45 minutes yeah. and you don't want to leave anything on the table right right yeah or you don't want to get to 10 minutes and you're like holy shit i got a whole half hour left of stuff there and better now you be start, 500 questions yeah yeah and now <laughs> you start talking a mile a minute just to get it all out so um but it's it's easier on us if we're if the speaker's like yeah if you go over 10 50 minutes that's okay it's like whew, okay a little less pressure yeah so I've been in both situations, and I prefer a little leeway with the, yeah. with the time. Okay. But I, I totally respect why a lot of conference orders don't give it. Yeah. yeah, they're super strict. Yeah. So, but anyway. All right, so back to your favorite procedure, lip, lips. So was that, did that happen to be the first procedure you felt you were really good at? Um, no. No. It was brows. It was brows. Yeah, and even my instructor at the time said, which service do you love? And I remember saying brows, which is funny because now I think it's one of the harder ones Yeah. because of the mapping and things like that have, that have come into play. But I remember saying, I love brows. Yeah. And brows is what is what I loved immediately, which is funny. I think it's always changing, though. I, I'm always changing what I love. Right, 
Yeah. Or yeah. sometimes brows are my favorite. Sometimes eyeliner is my favorite. Sometimes lips are my favorite. Yeah. So lips. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. What is it? Uh, not everybody loves lips. I love lips. What is it about lips that you like so much? Um, that, that it's colorful. Yeah. Right. We get to get out of the yes. boring browns yep. and, and yep. neutral tones yep. and so have fun. Really fun colors. Yeah. Most people sit up immediately are in love mm-hmm. with lips. Where sometimes with the eyeliner, they're swollen, they're puffy, they're red, brows, same thing. Right. And even if there is swelling with the lips, it's, they love it. They're like, they love oh, it. oh, they think they're sexy immediately, yeah, right? They're like, like they feeling themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that's what I love about it is clients sit up and they immediately are like, ooh, yeah, I like this. They like it right away. Mm-hmm. So are you, so what needle do you use for your lips? I use a one round liner. You're a single needle yeah. girl. I was trained on a five yeah. round liner. Um, the last few years I've dropped down to a one yeah and I'm shocked because you're 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 like old school like me you've been doing this as long as me and and you're a single needle girl yeah so that's that's fine I started a lip one time with a single needle started and I was like oh Oh, for me I'm like oh hell no (laughs) it's gonna take me all day (laughs) so I'm I'm an 11 mag okay yeah yeah I'm an 11 11 mag so I I really enjoy the mag Mm -hmm. but I have a couple artists here that do lips with a single needle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I respect somebody. I, you know what, Brittany? I'm the type of artist that I respect difference. I respect the uniqueness of um, each artist. And um, to me, it doesn't matter what needle you use Absolutely. or your technique or your pigment line. That none of that ever has mattered to me. Uh, it's the end result, you know. So, well, that's what makes teaching interesting. Yeah, because everyone's going to have a different style right. or something that they're drawn to more than something else. Exactly. So I can give my students like some, all kinds of different tools, but they might all end up picking something different. Right. And not everybody's going to be good with the single. Right. Uh, and and yeah. they might be better with, you know, a, 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 a larger shader. They might be yeah. better with a mag. And certainly not everybody is good with, with a mag. One artist in particular, Michonne, I started her on a mag maybe eight years ago. And she was getting dark spots in her mm-hmm. lips at first. It was causing her not to like lips. And took the 11 mag out. But Amber did excellent with the 11 mm-hmm. mag. Yeah. And uh, so we put a 14 round shader mm-hmm. in her hand. And her lip game changed like just like that. So I think it's important you do apprenticeship mm-hmm. programs like I do, which we're going to talk in a minute, to recognize if one of your artists that you're mentoring is struggling with a needle. Don't you think it's like our responsibility to kind of Absolutely. recognize that and then maybe put a different needle Absolutely. configuration in their hand and yep. see if, you know, that that's a better needle for them? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Try this. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it's important for artists to be versatile in their needles, in their, te- in mm-hmm. their techniques. Yeah. Like you might be a single needle girl, but if I gave you a mag, could you sit down and like yes. do it? Right. Absolutely. I knew, I knew yes. you were going to say that. Yep. And I think that's important. Yes. You need to be a well-rounded artist. A well-rounded that's artist. That's why... Well, and I know this is probably subjective, but that's why I really like to teach brows, liner, lips in a fundamentals course mm-hmm. because you need to learn all different types of skin, needles. Right. You know, and then you can specialize in something for sure, but yeah. you need to be a well-rounded artist a well-rounded that can artist. pick up anything and execute. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't I don't know about lips because I don't um, I've I've done plenty of eyebrows mm-hmm. you know with the, with the single needle but my needle my needle of choice my favorite needle is the um, the seven or the eight round round shader but when the whole industry got on to the single needle I was fascinated and I mm-hmm. you know and I got onto it and yeah. I wanted to like you know master yeah. that yeah. ombre brow yeah. and the pixels and and then once I did I was like ah, okay I'm done yeah. with that back to my seven yes. eight round shader but I think with brows. Is it the same with lips? With brows, some skin types really aren't a good candidate for that single needle. If they're super yes. oily yep. and their Definitely. skin's resistant, mm-hmm. like a single needle, you're just going to... Yes, especially if they have, I, I find, sun damage or, or like a thicker lip. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So same thing with lips. Yep. So there's some lips yep. where the single needle is just not going to be it's the best choice. You you, you want to get into yep. a I'll larger... I'll use a five-round shader yep. at that point, and mm-hmm. I love that. Right. So is that's that's the biggest needle yep. that, that you go to. Yep. I've so. never... I have used a nine, a nine mag before okay. with lips. All right. Do you use a, um, a mouth guard? I don't. You don't. I, I was trained to use a mouth guard, yeah, though. Yeah, I was, I, too. I don't. I don't either. Yeah. I don't. It bugs me. Yeah, me too. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it at all. I feel like I get like a almost too hard of a stretch maybe i don't know what the right yeah. word is but yeah i think only a couple of times have i pulled one out mm-hmm. is because sometimes when you if it's an older lip especially if you stretch yes. you almost get 
like yes. a, like a like a, a valley or a yes. dip in the lip that I, I can't get to uh-huh. punch back out yep. and I'll, I'll get a lip guard out yep. um, but other than that I think maybe twice or two or three times yep. in like my, my career with lips I got look so that, that, that's interesting mm-hmm. um, what else about lips is there anything you want anybody to know about lips so fun they're so fun yeah they're, uh, they're hard though they, they are, are uh, yeah. i think our job is hard i don't yeah. care if it's a brow liner or lip i think our job is hard why do you think okay so most of the industry is doing doing brow well all of the yeah. indi- not all there are some artists that really don't do brows i mean yeah. they only do eyeliner yeah. um or they only do lips but the majority of the industry is doing brows and i all and hardly anyone's doing eyeliner mm-hmm. these last few years but i've seen lips and lip blush mm-hmm. get really popular. Mm-hmm. Do you think lips have become more popular than eyeliner at this point? Because there was a time when lips were not That's true. popular in the industry. Yes. It was the least requested yep, the least. procedure. Yep. Is it more popular than eyeliner? Ooh, that's a hard one. Yeah, right? Maybe, but only slightly. Yeah, maybe only slightly. Mm-hmm. Here, th- but maybe it's because I don't think a lot of, there's not a lot of really good eyeliner technicians out there. Why do you think that is? It's hard. It is hard. You gotta be really talented and motivated and work hard and not give up. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. Plus, then deal with your client's skin. Yeah. And if they have deep set eyes, or right. Yeah. Eyes there's are so hard. many. There's so many things that go into it. So, so that's why I feel like maybe lips are a little bit more popular, is because it's yeah. not, not quite as hard. That's, but it's all hard. It's hard. <laughs> Eyeliner is my favorite procedure. Yeah. I do yeah. love eyeliner. I, I love good eyeliner. I, I do. I tell all my clients, you have to be badass to get eyeliner and yeah. you have to be badass to give eyeliner yeah <laughs> it, i i agree you have to be really brave yes you, do. you have to really brave um yeah because a lot can go wrong you're mm-hmm. working right around the eyeball you got to control yep. the eye from blinking there, yep. you know in movement there there's tearing there's there's a lot mm-hmm. going on um i make all my students do lash liner in their training yeah and a lot of them choose not to do any type of eyeliner afterwards but right. i still make them because 100 percent don't want to do it <laughs> yeah and there's always a small percent that go I loved that. Yeah, it was my first procedure wow. that came in f- that I was good at. That okay. I felt like that doesn't I, surprise me. Why does yeah. that not surprise me? Yeah, I don't. I, and it, isn't that crazy? Because yeah. usually it's brows for yeah. people. Yeah, and I struggled with the symmetry. I struggled mm-hmm. in the bulb area mm-hmm. with brows for a while. Yeah. You know, when I first started out all those years ago, that was that was like my nemesis. Is, yeah. is that that bulb area getting the, the getting the shape, figuring out the shape, and how to get them really super symmetrical? Back then, there really wasn't mapping. No, do you know how me. I was taught to map? And I am not joking. It hmm. was two steps to the left. And one to the right, and two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even joking. <laughs> and I look back, and I'm like, oh, was, <laughs> that's how we I think I might know who that was. I think we talked yes, about her yes. at the conference. Yep. <laughs> that's hysterical. Yep. I, you know, I could see that. Yep. That's hysterical. And that is really how I was taught. To yeah. Me. Well, back then there wasn't mapping. No, there wasn't. Everything was freehanded. Mm-hmm. We fr- yep. or used calipers. Yep. You'd freehand the brow on there. You just draw it. Yeah. Most of us did, and then maybe you would get out calipers to mm-hmm. like measure to make sure like you were right on the money. Nowadays, it's you know string mm-hmm. mapping and just all kinds of different ways to map and get your design on quick and, and symmetrical, which is, I think, a good thing. But I still really instill in my artists and my apprentices, I still want you to be able to freehand a brow. Definitely. I think it's important. Yes, you can use the string and go to your, your, your rulers and your measurement tools. That doesn't make you any less of an artist. Definitely use those. Mm-hmm. But, it's, but, I, but I, I do force them to also freehand. Well, it's just a guide. That's what I tell my, yeah. my apprentices. Yeah. I'm like, this is just a guide. You still need to be able to draw on an eyebrow, especially right. if you go to tattoo and you wipe your line off. You should be able to visually know how to draw on an eyebrow or tattoo an eyebrow still. Yeah. That, like, you're an artist. Like, like, see it. Well, in body tattooing, mm-hmm. you don't tattoo if you can't draw. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's like number one. And when you go, when, you know, when I was getting my body tattoo apprenticeship, I mean, yeah, I had to bring in my portfolio and show them my sketch work and all. I mean, they look at your portfolio. You have to draw mm-hmm. in order to tattoo. So I'm kind of of the mindset of that. You have to be able to draw a pair of eyebrows, mm-hmm. freehand them on, you know, in order to be a well-rounded, really good artist. Yeah. And it will... Like I said, it could like save your ass maybe sometimes. I mean, you could Absolutely. lose your stencil, yeah. um, you know, unless you're outlining it in with a single needle, yeah. you know, which a lot of, you know, artists are doing nowadays are actually mm-hmm. outlining that in, which I, I think is fine. I don't find any, I don't have no issue with that at all. I think whatever works, whatever gets you to an absolutely mm-hmm. beautiful result for your client, 
that's your secret sauce. Yep. No matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are kind of, I don't know. I've heard some like, you know, rude comments about the outlining and this and that. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand that. It's like, but that's her secret sauce. And look how beautiful those brows are. And if it works for her. And if it works for her, why is it wrong? Mm -hmm. Or why do you, why, why is it not okay? We all have to find our way to uh, achieving beautiful brows Mm -hmm. for all the different clients that, you know, come to us. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just a little bit more, you know, liberal and open-minded yeah, with, with that I sort agree. of thing. Yeah. All right. I do tell my apprentices though that they need to draw. I do they tell them they need to draw. Yeah. And in, our, in my class, they draw eyebrows, they draw eyeliner, they draw lips. They are. Yeah. A hundred. A hundred percent. A hundred percent.